Hi there, I'm Max with Apri.io here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an API Express service which connects to a relational database. And um, it will set up a custom uh, SQL query. And basically, the service will uh, do a login type. So we'll check if a user exists in the database. And then if the user exists, we'll return one response. And if the user doesn't exist, we'll return a different response. So let's start. But first, I want to show you the actual database and how it looks. So I have a database here, which is hosted um, on the cloud. And you can see it's very simple. So it's a user's collection. So it's a table um, users right here. And I have three users. So I have Alex, Amy, and Julia, and then the password. So again, this is my relational database to which I'm going to connect. Now let's go to API Express. And the first thing you need to do is you need to create a database connection. But I already have a connection, so I'm just going to show you how it looks. Uh, but in general, it's very simple to set up. It's just very standard stuff. Basically, a URL, database name, username, uh, and then password. But we should probably test and make sure we can connect to it. And you can see the test is successful. OK? So once you have a database connection, you can create APIs. Uh, but I'm also going to use an existing project here for people. And there is already one API. And I'm going to, in the same folder, I'm going to create a second API. Let's click New Service. And it loads the service builder. Now, first thing, this is the input. And then this is the result of the service. So first, we'll give it a name. We'll call this sign in, maybe. All right. Uh, now, the service will also accept, uh, will basically require a username and a password. So I'm going to, under request query parameters, I'm going to set username, username, and then password. All right, so that's, that's the, uh, I'm basically right now defining the signature for the API Express service. Okay. Um, so next, I'm going to use a SQL component. And now the SQL component allows me to write any any SQL, which what I need here. First, let's select the database. And now what I usually do is when I add a SQL component, I just write the simplest query just to make sure it works. And then click Generate. And this allows me to test the query. And it works, so I get the result. Now, this result only, uh, we show only partial response. So again, even though I have three users, it will only show one because the response can be large. Let's close. All right. Now, the actual query that we need is because we need to check if the user, so we're going to say something like uh, where name. Now, in the parameters, you specify like this. All right. And password and password. OK. Now, clicking this button, um, API Express will parse the parameters and then add them here automatically. So clicking this button, and you can see the two parameters, and we want to set them to a string. Okay, And here, you need to map them um, to, so we're mapping them to username and password, which were defined on the start component. Right? So like this. So what's going to happen is that the API Express service will uh, require two inputs, username and password, which will be passed into the service and then in turn passed into this query. Okay. And as before, let's test it. Let's enter, actually, it's Alex and password. All right. And we can see that we got uh, the, the, the response. And if we enter in valid password, then we can see we get nothing. All right. So let's run this again and import the response. So here we set a template response for the SQL component. Okay. So now the next step is you want to add some logic and then say a user found and then user not found. So for that, we're going to use a script component. Now the script component allows to write any custom logic using JavaScript. And so this is how it's going to look. So I'm going to say, 
Now, z, um, body is the response from the previous component. It's always, right? So the previous component is SQL, right? And we're going to say that if the length is more than zero, meaning there is, um, there is JSON, if you remember, when the user is found, we see a JSON response. Then uh, we're going to say result, and then so status will say user found, and then we'll add a code 200, right? So this is going to be used as a HTTP response code. And then if not, let's copy this. Else. Right? No, it's formatted, but that's fine. Um, so if else response is, we'll say user not found, and we'll give a response of 404, uh, basically kind of a not found, right? Now we can click run script. Now what happens is user found is because it uses the response that is set here. But of course, when you run it, you know, we'll either get a user or we'll get nothing. So this is the script component. The last thing is we need to basically configure the end component. And first we want to set the status code. So 200 is a default value, but we want it to be, you know, we want it to be set based on the SQL query. And so we're going to select uh, body code here. And then for the response, we're going to use body, which is again, the response from the previous component, which is shown here. And we are actually ready to test this. So let's, let's test. Right, and there's a user Julia, and we'll give it an incorrect password. Just type password here, and type test. And you can see it says not found and code 404. And of course, the code is right here uh, as well. And let's change Julia's password to 123 and click test. And here we go. You can see that the user is now uh, found, and we also get this response here. Uh, and again, this is the service URL that you can then easily import inside the app builder. Now, so this approach is, you know, this approach returns a different status code, uh, either 200, which is success, and then 404, which is not found. Now, now in the app, you would um, set up a, a callback handler for success right, when a service is invoked, and then you would set up one for an error. So that's one way to do it. What we can quickly modify it is that instead of using the callbacks, what we can do is, in both cases, we can actually return 200, uh, which means that, you know, do something like this. So basically what this means is that if the user is found, it's a it's a success response, you know, it's a, it's a success. And then if the user is not found, it's also a success. The only difference is now the message. Let's actually do this. Oh, actually, sorry, no, we don't need that because of the bracket here. All right, and that runs script, and you can see we change it to here, and now we go back to and, and we're gonna say 200 because Right? If it's found, it's 200. If it's not found, it's 200. But then we have the message. Let's click test. And uh, is it Alex. So you can see user found success. But then if we say um, Jenny. So we also get 200 here success but then the message is different. So in this case, inside the app, you would um, you know, look at the status message. Uh, and based on that, you'll know if the, uh, if the uh, user exists or the user doesn't exist uh, in the database. All right. So um, hopefully this was helpful. And uh, definitely check out other videos in the API Express um, playlist. We also have a video how to import 
uh, an existing API Express service inside the App Builder. So basically, that's what you do uh, when you start working uh, on the app. Uh, but again, hopefully this was useful, and thank you for watching.